Now you know, because a good name, and he knows that black is not a good name. As we grow up in Jamaica, we always hear our parents say, anything too black, no good. And it's a fact. Check the dictionary. It's simple logic. Simple. Not, nothing, nothing hidden. This is not hidden facts. It's right there. So, part two, part, answer part two to the preacher's question. Why is there such, such animosity among the people? For, among black people for black people? Now, from my perspective, the second reason why there is such animosity among the black people for the black people, or more correctly, the people that the preacher and others are calling black, my people, is because of religion and its various religious indoctrinations. The same religion that these same preachers, these same missionaries, these same mercenaries, these same assassins and others are calling themselves, that are calling themselves white, have used to inculcate their victims' minds with dogmas, lies, and half-truths. The evidence has shown and will no doubt continue to show that throughout recorded history, religion and its various belief systems are responsible for almost all, if not all, the, the wars, the genocides, the evils and the crimes against us, the natural native earthly human family, than any other violations of Mother Nature's natural laws or principles. In fact, I recently listened to a YouTube video of a very prominent and outspoken Jamaican radio um, talk show host. As he pointed out and lamented the fact that the more churches you have in Jamaica, it's the more crime or the more the crime rate and violence increase and increase on, on the island. Answer three, or answer to the preacher's question, part three. Why there is such animosity among the black people for the black people? Well, again, from my perspective, the third reason for the animosity that this preacher made mention of among the people that he called the black people is that it is a deliberate designed by the religious political pyramid twin system. It, 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 it is its covert and sinister operatives and operations that are cunningly and covertly conducted among our people that this preacher called the black people that are the real devils that are causing, instigating and are also benefiting and profiting from the so-called black and black or black on black crimes or black on black violence and animosity. He continued and I quote, and then when I study, I realized that for 400 years, the black man and the black woman was put in slavery. You were hanged, you were burned, you were raped, you were <laughs> shot, stolen from. Yet it's the only race that sing Amazing Grace while it happened. Never blame God. Still taught your children about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. While you are you being raped, hanged, put on fire, destroyed. The only race that literally said that we will not blame God for this terrible tragedy. Sing amazing grace and wonderful spirituals. Unquote. Now I humbly ask that you, my viewers and listeners, please listen to the video again. And please note the tone of the preacher's voice. And the very jubilant and excited responses he got from his audience, and especially those among his faithful congregation that he called the black people. Please listen to their exuberant responses as he emphasized the fact that they were the only race that sang Amazing Grace, while all manner of evils, some of which he had just made mention of, happened to it. I wanted to pay very close attention to how they chuckled, applauded, and joyfully cheered him on. Now, even though I think 
I know and understand the meanings, definitions, effects, and the spiritual hypnotic power of the word sign and symbol black. I still find this statement by the preacher very disturbing and almost hopeless for all the people that were in his immediate audience and congregation that just casually and without exhibiting any form of thinking, critical thinking, any form of thinking, let alone critical thinking or objection, would laugh, would chuckle and cheer the preacher on after he had just insulted their basic human intelligence and common sense and the intelligence and common sense of a whole race or a whole group of people. I find it even more disturbing that one of the preacher's followers and member of his audience and one that appears to be a member of the people that has just been insulted would not only endorse the preacher's very insolent sermon, but also be in a hurry to leave the conference, to go home or to go wherever, and then make a video of his sermon, accompanied by some very outrageously corny, and let me repeat, some very outrageously corny and demeaning still images, and then post it on YouTube for the world to see and hear. The record will show and also prove that this preacher's sermon or this preacher's message and the accompanying very corny still images that are provided by one of his convert follower and collaborator, namely LP like Paul, are not, and I repeat, they are not the true and accurate representations of my ancestor's story, nor is it something to be in any way proud of. Nor is it something for anyone, let alone us, their descendants, today, to be laughing, clapping, and cheering about. And to further add insult to the injuries, to have a Caucasian preacher who might well be a direct bloodline descendant, an heir and successor of those same European, Europeans, those same black Caucasians, that have inflicted and committed those heinous violence, crimes and atrocities upon my ancestors and by extension upon us, their descendants today that he himself made mention of to come now and rub it in my face from, a, from his pulpit. For those of you that might not quite understand, let me give you an example of what I mean by adding insult to injuries and rubbing it in my face. According to some anthropological studies on the definitions of the human race, there are at least five races of people on the planet Earth today. And even though the record or the history has shown that all races, including the Caucasian race, have suffered severely and mercilessly at the hands of Caucasians. However, not one of these five races on this planet has suffered exploitation, suffered persecution, suffered colonizations, subjugation, genocides, attempt total annihilation, just to name a few of the evils that the aliens, conquerors, and colonizers, the black Caucasians, which I call the black Caucasians, and their heirs and successors have brought upon us the natural native earthly humans that this preacher and his collaborators call the black people. History or the record will show that no other race or group of people has experienced human suffering, human exploitation, and human injustice like the race or the group of people that the alien system and this preacher called, named, labeled, and profiled black. And according to the pre this preacher's own words, and I quote, yet it's the only race that sang Amazing Grace while it happened. They never blamed God. They still taught their children about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 
While you're being raped, hanged, put on fire, destroyed, the only race that literally said that we will not blame God oh, yeah. for this terrible tragedy. Sing amazing grace <laughs> and wonderful spirituals. Unquote. Now, please note carefully that this preacher is both confident, presumptuous, and subtle enough to be directly and indirectly admitting that his race and his ancestors are guilty of persecuting and bringing evil upon all races of people upon the earth, including some of his own people. And that while all other races resisted and reclaimed their dignity and humanity, the only race are the only one that remained a sheep oh and eternally faithful and loyal to him, to his ancestors, to his religion, and his God, or gods, is the one he called the black, the black race and the, the black, black people. Why? Why? This is very, very important. This is a very, very important question. And one that deserves a very important and thoughtful answer. Why is it the only race that in the preacher's own words, the only race that sang Amazing Grace while it happened? Why is it the only race that never blamed God? Why is it the only race that is still teaching its children about Jesus Christ and Him crucified? Why is it, while it is being raped, hanged, put on fire and destroyed? Why is it the only race that literally said that it, is, it will not blame God for the terrible tragedy? Why is it the only race that continues to sing amazing grace and wonderful spirituals while they are literally being exterminated? <laughs> well, from my perspective, this preacher was not only consciously and unconsciously mocking and jeering uh, my ancestors and my people today, some of whom were, were right there sitting in his audience cheering him on, the people that he called the black people, not only was he mocking and jeering them of their blackness, of their ignorance, of their sheep-like status, their docile behavior and responses to his insults and his ancestors' aggression towards them, but it is, the, oh, it is also my people's express manifestation of what is today known as the Helsinki Syndrome or, and the Stockholm Syndrome. What this preacher will not admit to and what he would not tell you in this or any of his sermons or messages is that my people, my people's manifest or perceived blackness, ignorance, sheep-like status, docile behavior and responses to his ancestors' aggression and wickedness towards them and his insults leveled at them today were not and are not their natural behavior. Nor was it their natural state, far be it. But that it was, what he won't tell you is that it was and that it is because blackness, because ignorance, because sheep-like status, docile, uh, docility and docile responses, responses were physically and literally whipped into them by his, the preacher's ancestors that I call the very fearful and dreadful black Caucasians and the God-fearing black Caucasians. What this preacher won't tell you and cannot tell you because the truth is not in him is that my ancestors, the people that he denigratingly called the black people, did not know fear. And because they did not know fear, they did not and they could not have practiced fear. What this preacher won't tell you is that the terrible, fearful, and dreadfulness of his creator and God, and the terrible fear and dreadfulness of his creator. Let me repeat that. What this preacher won't tell you is that the terrible fear and dreadfulness of his creator and God and the terrible fear and dreadfulness of his creator and God's creatures who are his ancestors who I call the black Caucasians 
and the continued terrible fear and dreadfulness of his people and his terrible and dreadful God today were most savagely, covertly, intimidatingly, fearfully and otherwise implanted and inculcated in them by whom? By his ancestors. What this preacher won't tell you and cannot tell you because the truth is not in him is that my ancestors did not know the terrible and dreadful uh, fear of God or the fear of anything. It was only when his ancestors, the black, fearful and dreadful Caucasians, just show up among them from out there somewhere and started to be who and what they really are. In other words, when they started to be their true selves, it was only then that my ancestors knew and experienced fear. Here is a quote from uh, Frederick Douglass and the Willie Lynch documents called Let's Make a Slave or the original development of the social being called the Negro. And another word for black, the Negro people. But, but, but before I, 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 I do, uh, let me just quickly read Three quotes from the preacher and his ancestors' holy book that will give you the basic description of his and his ancestors' um, God. Here, here, here is the quote. And I quote, The great and dreadful God. This is found in Nehemiah 1 and verse 5. O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God. This is also found in Daniel 9 verse 4. And it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And it is a dreadful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Hebrew 10 and verse 31. And it is also a very fearful and dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living servants of the living God. Quote. The preacher. It said. Sorry rather. Quote from the Willie Lynch documents. Take the meanest and most restless nigger. Now here I'm trying to show to you. Why all people are the way they are. And I quote. Take the meanest and most restless nigger. Strip him of his clothes. In front of the remaining male niggers, the female and the nigger infant, tar and feather him. Tie each leg to a different horse, faced in opposite directions. Wow. Set him on fire and beat both horse to pull him apart in front of the remaining nigger. The next step is to take a bull whip and beat the remaining nigger male to the point of death in front of the female and the infant. Don't kill him, but put the fear of God in him, for he can be useful for future breeding. Unquote. So now, and for your information, these were just some of the evil instructions that were given by the preacher's God-fearing ancestors that call themselves white people. And some of the barbaric actions that were carried out by them, the God-fearing people, on my ancestors who they had the audacity to call, label, and name the black people. Unless you forget or miss the main point that this whole purpose or the whole purpose of this was and is to put what? The fear of God in my ancestors and in my people today. So let me repeat the quote from the preacher again in order that those of you that have eyes to see and ears to hear may see and know who were the real black ones. Oh, wow. Then, and who are 
the real black ones among us or the real black people among us, the natural native earthly humans today. And I quote, and when I study the preacher, I'm quoting the preacher again. And when I study, I realized that for 400 years, the black man and the black woman was put in slavery. You were hanged, burned, raped, sh shot, stolen from. Yet it's the only race that sang Amazing Grace while it happened. Never blame God, still taught your children about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Mm -hmm. While you're being raped, hanged, put on fire, destroyed. The only race that literally said, we will not blame God for this terrible tragedy. Sing Amazing Grace and Wonderful Spirituals, unquote. Now, please note that this very cunning and very crafty propagandist preacher did not openly say or at the very least implied who was and who is responsible for this evil or for the evils that were brought upon my ancestors and by extension who is responsible for the continued evils that are still being unleashed on my people the world over today. Note, the very cunning and crafty propagandist preacher did not openly admit that it was his ancestors, the Europeans, the fearful and dreadful black Caucasians, his people, under the inspiration and instruction of their very fearful and dreadful and terrible God, that are, in other words, and deeds, that are, in words and deeds, responsible for my people, my ancestors' anguish, their pain, their sufferings, and their subjugated conditions. For here is a people today, my people, according to this preacher, the only people on the planet Earth that would not even think of blaming the God of their, uh, the God or the gods of their slave masters, uh, their lying and this, the God of their lying and deceitful preachers, their rapers, God of their rapers, abusers, oppressors, prosecutors, their lynchers. Um, their uh, captures, their conquerors, their controllers, their traitors, their murderers, the God of the system, etc. Even if and when the blatant facts and the evidence are staring them in their faces and they whip and pain and torture is on their backs, they would not do it. Now, according to the preacher, and again I quote, yet it is the only race that sang Amazing Grace while it happened to them. They never blame God. Still taught their children about Jesus Christ and Him crucified while they've been raped, hung, put on fire, destroyed. It's the only race that literally said that we will not blame God for this tragedy, for this terrible tragedy. Sing Amazing Grace and Wonderful Spirituals, unquote. Now, by any standard, Anyone that is alive and is with senses that are activated after hearing and listening this uh, preacher's words will at the very least be tempted to agree and affirm to themselves that this got to be and that this is the most docile and stupid race of people on the planet Earth. For how could they continue to accept these abuses and the persecutions, etc., and not blame God, the God of their real and formidable enemies. Something got to be wrong with them. Now, I will admit, and I must also admit, that my careful analysis of this preacher's sermon or message has shown that he has directly or indirectly, knowingly or unknowingly, provided the answers and suggestions for the solutions to most, if not all, of, my, of, of the problems that my people, the people that he called the black people, have faced and are currently facing today. Yes, knowingly or not, he has provided the answers and suggestions for at least most of our major problems. And if he has directly and knowingly provided the answers and suggestions, then he also know that they, meaning my people, would be unable to see the forest because the trees are in the way. The trees are in their way. In other words, he knew that they would be unable and that they are unable to see, the, 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 see and decode the answers and suggestions that he gave in his message 
because of fear. The fear of the dreadfulness and judgment of his and his ancestors, God, that are embedded and, and coded in them. Consequently, he knew they would continue to sing amazing grace and wonderful spiritual. Now, with whom does the buck stop? Or where does the buck stop? In other words, who or what is ultimately responsible and who or what is to be blamed? From my perspective, the buck begins and the buck stops or ends with the ultimate head of it all. And the ultimate head of it all is the God of my ancestors, oppressors, persecutors, and their heirs and successors today in whose name and inspiration all these deeds were performed and are still being performed today. He is their creator, their God, their generator and dispatcher, and their CEO, their chief executive officer. And all that they did then and all that they are doing today is for their God, their king or queen and country. For example, the record has shown and has proven that the very black Caucasians or the very black Caucasian Christopher Columbus and his band of criminals, hooligans and murderers did, did all that they did in the name of their God and for their queen and country. All the British slave traders did all that they did in the name of their God and for their king and country. To further prove my point, let me quickly read for you two stanzas from one of their very God-fearing and patriotic poems which I found online titled God, King and Country. And I quote, We must go forth, my fellows. The voice of our great God bellows and bid us obey the vestry. All for God, King and Country. Our God, so peaceful and loving, wills us burn our foes to nothing. His will is spoken through conclaves who want to make strangers his slaves. Believe us now, all and sundry, all for God, King and Country. Unquote. So what my people should be doing is to start rightfully blame God. The God of our ancestors, oppressors and persecutors. Who is the same God of our ancestors, oppressors, persecutors and slave masters, heirs and successors that are ruling over us today. We should and we must blame their God for the terrible tragedy and the terrible evils that he has unleashed on us through and by the hands of his creatures and servants the very fearful and dreadful black Caucasians. Then and only then, our situation and circumstances would immediately begin to change for the better, at the very least for the better mentally. Now what my people should and must be doing is simple. Stop teaching our children or stop teaching your children about our ancestors, slave masters and their ears and successors king. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and Him crucified. In other words, we must stop teaching our children the same old lies and ridiculous stories that our ancestors, slave masters, had forcefully and mercilessly taught them and the same old lies and ridiculous stories that we have inherited yeah. from our ancestors and the same old lies and ridiculous stories that our ancestors, slave masters, heirs and successors are continuing to teach preach and reinforcing us today and what are some of these same old lies and ridiculous stories they are the lies and ridiculous stories about Jesus Christ and lies about the man called Jesus Christ and according to the preacher preacher's word him crucified for example Lies and ridiculous stories that the man called Jesus Christ came into this world to bring my ancestors and especially my ancestors that were the direct victims of the European transatlantic slave trade and their descendants today, a thing called salvation. In other words, 
that he, Jesus Christ, came to rescue my ancestors and their descendants from the harm, the dangers, the chains and the shackles, the mental and psychological slavery and deception and the jaws of the black Caucasian slave masters, slave traders and oppressors then and now. Lies and ridiculous stories that Jesus Christ or the man called Jesus Christ was my ancestor's king, mm -hmm. my ancestor's savior, my ancestor's redeemer, my ancestor's deliverer. And that he was crucified and gave his life for my ancestors' freedom from the black Caucasian slavery. And us, their descendants, freedom, just to name a few of the lies and ridiculous stories that have been told and are being taught to, to us today. Our basic common sense coupled with our knowledge of our ancestors' past experience and our present day condition the world over today, will bear witness to the fact and have borne witness to the fact that nothing is or nothing could be further from the truth. The fact is that common sense coupled with the evidence, some of which can be readily found in the Adamic race, history and holy book, also called the, holy, the Christian Holy Bible, have shown and proven that the man called Jesus Christ is not our natural king. Meaning he is not my people's natural native earthly king. According to our ancestors slave masters history and holy book. And their religious teachings and belief. Jesus Christ was born of one of their preordained tribes to be their king. And I quote. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem. In Judah, during the time of King Herod, Magi, or meaning wise men, from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Unquote. Matthew chapter 2, from verse 1 to 2, this New International Version, NIV Version. Here we see written in black and white that Jesus Christ or Yahushua, as he was most likely known by his parents and brethren, was born the king of the Jews. Not born the king of the world. <laughs> Not born the king of the earth. Not born the king of the Middle East. Which didn't exist until Europeans <laughs> made, made it Middle East. I don't know how you find Middle East, but Mm -hmm. With them all things are possible, if you believe that. Mm -hmm. Not born the king of the continent that is today called Africa. Mm -hmm. Not Jesus Christ was born the king of my people from the continent that is today called Africa. My people that the preacher disparagingly called the black people. But, that is, but, that, but their own book say, in black and white, that he was born the king of the Jews. Oh yeah, well done. What more could be clearer? <laughs> and according to the Seder Dami Grace history book, not our book, their book, titled the Christian Holy, called the Christian Holy Bible, and some beliefs, and some of their belief system or religious teachings, as king of the Jews, he would fulfill the prophecy of sitting on his great great grandfather, King David's throne. And rule over the entire 12 tribes of Israel, also known as the house of Israel. In other words, Israel's promised Messiah, or prom meaning anointed one, or Israel um, promised anointed king from David's tribe, the tribe of Judah, Judah, would rule over all the 12 tribes of the house of Israel that would return from being scattered all over the world or all over the earth to Israel and Israel would be the most mighty and fearful nation on earth once more. This is according to their book. It is said in their book at one time when Israel walked the world or tremble. Our people tremble with fear. So that is the promise. Now, let another quote from their book to prove that point. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was 
Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. And they are not of my people. This title then read many of the Jews. For the people were, for, for, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. This is John, um, the same book, John 19, verse 19 to 21. So whether Pilate said it, or even him say he's the king of the Jews, it's none of my business, that's their, that's their prerogative. But the fact is that he's the king of the Jews, not my king. And even though there are some who try to call themselves black Israelites, black Jews, they're really screwy man, man. Anyway, and another quote. A Canaanite woman, and I quote, a Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer her word. So his disciples came unto him and urged him, send her away, for she, kept, she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I quote, he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, unquote. And another scriptural quote, he, he, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. You heard earlier where the priest from the Jewish priest and rabbis said, don't, don't call him king of the Jews. Say he says so. Right? Because they did not accept him until this day they don't accept him. And it's their prerogative whether they accept him or not. Not mine. But he came to his own, his own people, Israel or the Jews, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, then... Sorry, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Unquote. Now, this is where a lot of preachers trick my people. And trying to claim ownership here. <laughs> now, common sense coupled with our knowledge of our ancestors' past experience and our present day conditions have shown and have proven that Jesus Christ is not one of us, meaning he is not one of my people. He did not come from us, from my people, does not belong to us, my people, did not come to us, did not come to my people. In fact, for those of us, my people, that still have physical eyes and the sense of sight to see, may admit that he, Jesus Christ, does not even look like us, at least the images that they show, does not even look like us or even resemble any of us, my people. And that he has nothing to do with us, my people, except to be the head slave master. This is what people are missing. He's the head slave master of us, the head slave master over us, and the head uh, slave owner of us all, my people. And that is why we are taught from birth until death. We are, that, is, that is why we are taught from birth until the day of our death to be his most faithful and obedient servants. That we should trust and obey him for there is no other way. In fact, we are taught and commanded by his most faithful and dreadful black Caucasian servants are slave masters. And I quote, Slaves, this is in your holy book again. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything. And do it not only when their eyes or their eye is on you and to carry and to curry favor, but with sincere of, sincerity of heart. And, and reverence for the Lord. Who is that Lord now? This one they call, this is Jesus. The head slave master. The head slave master. Colossians 3 and 22. 
the new international version. The evidence has shown and has also proven that he is one of his own, his own people. That he came from his own, came from his own people. That he belonged to his own, belonged to his own people. That he looks like his own. That he has everything to do with his own people. And is all about his own people. And that he is the elder brother, the elder teacher, the elder savior. Um, redeemer and deliverer of his own people. And nothing is wrong with that. His people. So only when we as a people stop believing in other people's God. And let me just back up a bit. In the scripture I quote, I should like point out something here. He said, he came unto his own and his own received him not. I pointed out earlier, this is where a lot of people have been misled. But as many that did receive him. Now people claim that they are Gentiles or heathen or whatever. So they receive him so they have top priority. Nonsense. As many that did receive him. It means many from among his people that did receive him. Paul and all the apostles that and all these things according to the Bible that accepted him were from his people. They were from one of either one of the tribe, the house of Israel. Many of them that did receive him, all did not receive him. Right? To them gave he power. Not you now who don't have no connection, bloodline or otherwise, with this guy. Come to about you receive him and you believe on him. So now you go, you're gonna take first place in heaven. Nonsense! He's not ours. He belongs to his people and that's fine. Let the people do their own thing and, and with their thing. Let's seek out ours. But let me not stray from my um, prepare. I just think I should point that, point, point that out. Okay. So the evidence has shown and has proven that he's from his own people. So only when we as a people start believing on other people's God, other people's saviors, other people's prophets, etc. And only when we stop teaching our children lies and ridiculous stories about Jesus Christ and that he is our Lord and Savior, only then will our oppressors, the black Caucasians and their God, see that our eyes are, op are reopened. Only then will the black Caucasians and their God see that we have become awakened from the religious hip are the religious hypnotic trance or from their religious hypnotic trance that they have placed us in. That we have become awakened to their lies and their evil deceptions. Only then will the black Caucasians and their God see that we have become enlightened. Only then will the black Caucasians and their God see that we are now going, we are not going to settle for the man, minority status and the black curse that they have characterized us and categorize us. Only then will our situation and circumstances begin to change. Only then will it begin to change. And I can change and, and, and change for the better. And our status and dignity as the natural native earthly human be restored. Yeah. And we wouldn't be blacklisted by our enemies anymore. That is the true meaning and definition of the saying, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But even though some of my people, or even though some people may argue and agree that the preacher himself has directly or indirectly, consciously or unconsciously, suggest is suggesting and telling my people, especially those that were in his immediate audience at the faith con conference, that this is what they should and must be doing, that they should be blaming his God, who is the same God of their ancestors, oppressors and slave masters. However, the evidence has shown that even today, in this day and age, the so-called modern day, 
the liberal day, the period in our history that some are claiming to be the day and the age of enlightenment, uh, to be the, the Aquarian age, the age of free thinking and free expression, free speech, etc. The evidence has shown that my people will not do it. And it is and and the evidence has shown, has also shown that the preacher's own audience at the annual faith convention, that his faithful followers, the faithful converts and believers that he called the black people, his faithful converts and followers that he called the black people, were by their expression, actions, and manifestations saying out loud, we will not blame God. We will not blame the God of our ancestors, slave masters and oppressors. We will not blame God, the God of our ancestors, slave masters and their heirs and their successors today. We will not blame God, the God, of, the God in whose names we were and we are persecuted. But we will continue to sing, to, to praise him. We will continue to worship him. We will continue to glorify him. We will continue to give him thanks. We will continue to adore him. We will continue to sing amazing grace and wonderful spirituals. We will continue to sing hallelujah anyhow. Yes, the evidence has also shown that they would rather blame themselves 